I hope this is recording. Yeah. Okay. Good. <sighs> what a beautiful day. So, my father emigrated from Sicily when he was just a little boy in the 1940s. And when we were little, we would go visit my dad's family who kind of lived a little bit far from us. So it was always a special event when we got to visit them and they would make these huge spreads of food. Italians love to eat. So, and at some point it would be time for desserts and out would come these big platters with all these Italian pastries and cookies and cakes and things. And they'd put out fresh fruit and make a fresh pot of coffee. And everybody would sit around the table and talk. They would speak in Italian, so I hardly ever knew what they were saying. At my Aunt Frances's house, on every cookie platter she put out, there were these little green cookies that had multicolored sprinkles on them. And I always wanted to like them because kids love sprinkles, right? I never did like them. They have dried fruit inside of them. And I just, it wasn't my jam when I was a little girl. So as an adult, I looked them up. I wanted to, you know, embrace my heritage and bring back some of the Italian traditions of my childhood. I figured out that there are a cookie called Cucidati. 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 My Italian's horrible. I don't know how to say it properly. And I modified the recipe slightly because I never liked them as a kid. So why not just swap out some ingredients and make it something that I would really like? Today, we shall treat ourselves with a delicious traditional Sicilian fig cookie called Cucidati. I really gotta learn how to say that. everybody, here's what we're gonna need to do in order to make these amazing Sicilian fig cookies. My family always just kind of lovingly referred to them as figgy cookies, and that's much easier to say than cucidati. The first thing we'll need to do is make our dough or pastry. The pastry starts with flour, then we add some sugar and a little bit of baking powder and salt. And that gets sifted together into a bowl to make sure that there aren't any lumps or clumps or anything. Then we'll take some butter, some unsalted butter, cut that into little cubes, that will then drop into the flour mixture and work it together with our fingers. In a separate bowl, we're going to mix together our wet ingredients for the pastry. And the wet ingredients for the pastry are milk, I'm using whole milk, one large egg, vanilla extract, and then for that pop of citrus flavor, I add a little bit of orange zest. So once all the wet ingredients are all mixed together, we'll slowly add the wet ingredients to the butter flour sugar mixture, and that will form a dough. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, these cookies are kind of a process, and for me, they're usually a two day process. I'll usually make the dough and the filling ahead of time and let them refrigerate overnight. It lets the orange zest that's in the dough sort of seep into the flour and helps the flour hydrate, and it just makes a better pastry dough. And then on the second day, I'll form the cookies and bake them. But moving on to the filling, the filling starts with nuts. I use three different kinds of nuts. I use almonds, walnuts, and pecans. I usually don't chop these up until after I toast them, which I do in a frying pan on top of the stove. You could also just throw them on a cookie sheet and throw them in the oven for a little while. Once they're toasted, chop them up. Then the other ingredients for the filling are the dried fruit. We're gonna use figs, of course. I use two different kinds of figs, black mission figs, and then some kind of like Turkish fig or Greek figs, the ones that are sort of pale yellow in color. This part's a little hard because dried fruit is really difficult to chop up, but just chop it up as finely as you can, almost to where it's a paste. And then the third dried fruit I add is dried cherries. Traditionally, these cookies have raisins in them and dates, but I'm pretty sure that those raisins and dates are part of the reason why I wasn't a fan of these as a kid. So I swapped out the raisins and dates for dried cherries. I just like the flavor of dried cherries better. Makes it seem fancier too. Then we add a couple of warm spices like cinnamon and nutmeg and a splash of brandy. Then we'll add some kind of preserves or orange marmalade. 
Sometimes I use orange marmalade, sometimes I use fake preserves, sometimes I use a combination of both, but some kind of citrus or fig jam or preserve helps all the chopped nuts and the chopped dried fruit really come together into a paste. I'll add a little bit of lemon zest and then finish off the filling with just a pinch of salt and some vanilla extract. Then we'll set the filling aside for a little while, let that brandy really soak in. Once the filling and the dough have rested, then take the dough, roll it out into a sheet, take some of the filling and form it into kind of a log shape at one end of your dough sheet, and then roll the dough over so it encases the filling. We'll cut that into little chunks and those will be our cookies. Once you've got enough cookies to fill a cookie sheet, pop those in the oven, and then while those are baking, we'll wanna mix together our glaze or our icing, which I just do with orange juice and powdered sugar. It's a really simple glaze. My Aunt Frances always made these green, at least as far as I can remember. And so I can't imagine them any other color. But you could just do a plain white glaze, or you could do any color you want, or you can do all different colors if you want. It's up to you. Once the cookies are baked, pull them out of the oven, put them on a cooling rack, and then it's time to decorate. You'll get your glaze, which I just paint on with a pastry brush, and then make them festive by adding some sprinkles. I feel very strongly that the tiny, crunchy, little ball sprinkles are the only sprinkles that belong on these cookies for a couple of reasons. One, tradition. Two, the crunch of the little crunchy ball sprinkles mimics the crunch of the little spherical fig seeds, and it just seems like a match made in heaven. Then that's really all you need to do. Once they're decorated, it's done. Your job is done, and you can just enjoy them and share them with all the people that you love.
No. No. No.
I made a big giant mess, but I don't even care because they are, it just, mm, just the smell of them brings me to a happy place. I love them. 